This week on CrossFeed. Glenn Beck, leave your church. <laughs> what children should be allowed at church? Are we one nation under God? Take and drink the true mucus. And do airport scanners violate your religion? Hello, everybody, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. I'm Pastor Jim Butler out at St. Luke's Lutheran Church in very soggy Dedham, Massachusetts. <laughs> welcome, everybody. Uh, first of all, I have to apologize for uh, last time. In fact, I'm just double-checking right now. Oh, you just lost your video of me. I'll be back in a second. I'm just I'm double-checking my recording settings. <laughs> <laughs> to make sure that we both appear um, on here. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> I was looking for feedback saying it was the best episode ever. <laughs> that's, all, that's all featured me. But No, this week, i tell you what. Let's just take me off and see if you know you get the feedback saying it's the best episode ever. Yeah, it's all Dale. You know, we don't have that many subscribers to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> you are ugly when you're angry. Okay. So, um... No, we've gotten almost four inches of rain up here. This Seriously? Weekend. Seriously. One place it's over four inches of rain. So it's, 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 so the sump pump is going now. It's, 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 it's something else up here right now. I got this. Somebody at church gave me this great article. Um, it says that the Gospel of John is anti Semitic. Are you totally deranged? And I just thought that was really hilarious, since John was Jewish. <laughs> yeah, well, it's because he's always complaining about the Jews. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I can, you know, the Jews said this, and the Jews said that, and, you know, so he, you know, he's doing these self-hating people. Yeah. Also hated Jesus, who's also a Jew. That's true. But, you know, well, that's why some translations today say the Jewish leader said, uh, you know, emphasize that, you know, these, this was, you know, everybody, this was, but this was the, the, you know, the Pharisees and the priests and those folks. Mm -hmm. So, um, so <clears throat> it just really cracked me up when I saw that. Uh, I was just, I yeah, it is kind of a strange there. thing. <laughs> uh, but would Jesus allow people to go through, uh, full body scanners? Ah, now there's a worthwhile question. Kind well, of an ugly question. Really. Let's let me have some problems with it. So uh, yeah. All right. So most of you have probably heard about these scanners that they're um, putting in place. I guess Cleveland Airport is going to be one of the places where they have it. Um, that it uh, it sort of does a, a Superman um, and uh, can scan through your clothes and uh, and give a, you know more than just an outline. Of your body, and the idea is this is uh, specifically sparked by the uh, the Christmas Day underwear bomber, um, which, by the way, these scanners would not detect liquid, <laughs> so they'd be useless against that anyway. And you can um, you can get if if you would rather not have people looking at the uh, the contents of your clothing so to speak, um, you can request a pat down instead, which would also not, if someone's hiding something in their underwear, it would not, <laughs> um, you know, cause they don't pat you down there. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, so that's what's going up, but this, um, uh, 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 some Muslims, um, matter of fact, the Beek, F I Q H. Council of North America has issued a fatwa, a religious edict, and said that um, Muslims should request the pat down. It is a violation of clear Islamic teaching that men or women be seen naked by other men or women, the edict said. Islam highly emphasizes haya, modesty, and considers it a part of faith. Um, which puts Muslims in a bit of a tricky spot because, you know, with the whole kind of Muslims looked at very, uh, um, suspiciously, um, when, 
when they're sort of, you know, the ones being looked at the most because of all the suicide bombers. And then you've got, um, you've got them saying, oh, no, we don't want to do the scanners. You know, <laughs> people go, hmm. <laughs> um, well, I mean, you know, as opposed to what, the 85-year-old Norwegian grandma? <laughs> You know, I mean, come on, you know, that, that's not exactly that, that you know, I, I don't know too many people, you know, uh, na- na- named, you know, Hilda Norsvik who've been, you know, out there doing um, suicide bombings or have had things to do with um, uh, uh, terrorist attacks. Right. Um, so then uh, you also, the, the Jews also... Um uh, Agadath Israel, uh, an Orthodox Jewish umbrella group, has told lawmakers scanners should only be used on passengers who failed metal detectors. So the problem is the whole point of these things is that certain things can go through metal detectors. Um, letter to Congress, the group called full body imaging offensive, demeaning, and far short of acceptable norms of modesty. Um, and even some even mentioned that some Christian groups have some struggles with this, uh, some fundamentalist groups. But you know, I kind of like what one guy argued. He says uh, this is you know this is this is kind of like going to the doctor. You know, it's it's nothing that's going to uh, uh, be particularly um, considered. Yeah, there it is. Christian morality goes to the intent, not legalism, like the experience to visiting the doctor. The mode of the scanner is not to be tiliated by a view of the body, but to provide safety and security. And I'm not sure how much detail these things. I don't think these things really uh, really allow that much detail. Okay, I um, you know, I was kind of curious how detailed these are, and so I just mm-hmm. googled um, full body sc- uh, scanner images, airport, something like that, and um, and I found a couple articles that had a um, that had a a, a picture along with the article, and there's enough detail that it's pretty nasty because I mean, there's it's 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 more detail than you know i would really want anybody looking at me but i i mean i suppose it's kind of like the doctor but uh you know it's real grainy and, and stuff like that and the other thing is you have to consider that this is people's you know bodies are kind of like um you know they're wearing clothes and so the clothes sort of disappear but the body's are, are still sort of smashed, cramped into these, into their clothes. So the, there's all these sort of bumps and wrinkles and stuff like that. It's really pretty gross. And you consider the average American, <laughs> not, uh, I, I like, I sort of took look, one look and went, oh, no, okay, that's enough. <laughs> So, so I'm telling not, you that may be uh, a lot of the scanners. They're like, okay, this is enough. Keep moving. You know, yeah, it's I mean, like, they, they don't. You know, the the guy that has to actually sit at that screen and watch these, he's the one that drew the short straw. <laughs> That's right. You know, but yeah, I, I mean, it, okay, I understand their 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 need for modesty, and I I, I applaud that actually. <laughs> Anything I think America probably needs is probably more modesty. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> there have been sometimes I'd like to say if these things, if a few of the teenage girls at church, uh, you know, like, mm, that's a, <clears throat> a little immodest there, sweetheart. Um, but I figure that's mom's job to, to, to say that. Um, and, yeah, a lot uh, of times I've seen where <laughs> mom's sitting next to her and dressed about the same. <laughs> and that's true. And then there was, then, so anyway, with the, the, but, you know, on the other hand, we do have to balance the for safety, and um, this is not done to be, you know, uh, 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 and I and, and personally, I would, and, and it's interesting because the article points out that the the body scanners were considered by most people to be preferable to the body pads. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Given the choice, all right, fine. <laughs> Take a look, because <laughs> keep your hands off of me. You know? Right. So, I mean, yeah. Given the choice, it, it's not much of a choice, really. <laughs> if you That's think right. about it, I, I I don't know. I mean, I I'm I'm not really. If it came down to a you know a vote of of whether people wanted to have it or not, I'm against it. I I really, I I I just, it's not going to find the liquids. Um, if you're going to allow the pat down. 
there's plenty of places you can hide it. There's already um, word about uh, female suicide bombers just getting breast implants um, filled with, uh, you know, explosive chemicals. So, I mean, you know, I just, I don't think it's necessarily going to solve anything. It seems like just another, uh, in, and I mean, this is purely a political thing, not a, a religious thing. I mean, just my opinion, but, um, you know, it just seems like they're, it's, it's something to make people feel safe but doesn't actually increase safety, which is the case with a lot of the security measures. So, I don't know. I'm not a fan. You know, do I think that it's a moral violation? I mean, I think I'd feel better about um, if there was, like, men doing the men's one and women doing the women's one. But then again, in this day and age, there's no saying that whether that person's gay or not, you know, so I mean, like, eh, just, eh, fine, you know, like, I wouldn't want the job and, you know, <laughs> just because I think there's a point to modesty beyond just not, uh, you know, not just getting the whole getting people excited thing. There's a point where you go, really, could you cover that up? <laughs> Well, yeah, but I think we, uh, you know, I, 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 this is, this comes under the rubric of the government feels it has to do something, and right. um, yeah, the reality is, I mean, um, you know, the more you try to find ways of preventing things, the more people will be determined to find ways they can get through it. Sure. Yeah, it's a cat and mouse game. Uh, I mean, there's, you know, so, but who knows? I mean, it's it's just... Uh, I'll be, I'll be in favor of it the situation. first time it actually catches somebody. We'll never hear about it. True. So, uh, that's a, you know, you know that, that, that we will not hear about it. But, okay. Uh, well, let's move on here to, well, you mentioned gay people, so let's deal with it, the uh, children of a lesbian couple here in the Catholic Church. Mm. Okay. So this is uh, out in Denver. Yep. And um, <clears throat> you're Boulder. There actually. were. Oh, yeah, I'm Boulder. Yeah, that's right. Uh, there were uh, uh, this little kid going to uh, a Catholic preschool, and uh, her uh, parents uh, are lesbian. Two moms. And uh, they, apparently there's some others as well. And they're told, okay, your kid can go to the preschool, but that's it. You can't continue school here afterwards because your um, lifestyle is not in accord with Catholic teaching. Uh, the pastor, it's uh, Sacred Heart uh, of Jesus School and Sacred Heart Catholic Church which doesn't really narrow it down. It's a pretty common name, but um, said it would be difficult for a child of gay parents to hear the church's teaching on marriage and then go home and see a different reality. We don't want to put any child in that tough position, nor do we want to put parents or teachers at odds with the teachings of the Catholic church. So, so if the, and the Archdiocese of Denver in a statement said, parents living in open discord with Catholic teaching in areas of faith and morals unfortunately choose by their actions to disqualify their children from enrollment. Okay. So my first question is, okay, does that mean that um, all of the parents are married? Are there any, uh, any students there whose parents are not married who are cohabiting or divorced? But not, uh, didn't have the marriage annulled. Why would any girl ever marry me? Never. <laughs> that would never happen. Yeah. Because, <laughs> um, you know, I've always said this if you're going to draw the line there, you've got to draw the line all the way. Otherwise, you're being completely inconsistent. You're saying, right. well, this sin is worse than the other one. But the other thing is, okay, so we don't want. Sinners kids in our school. <laughs> I'm thinking, shouldn't these people be specifically the people that you want to reach out to and, and, um, you know, invite them to come? Well, well, we don't want them to hear the truth at our school and then go home and, and not see the truth. We'd rather that they just not be exposed to the truth at all. 
Well, okay, but so what happened? So kids, second, third grade, fourth grade, and you know the teacher says marriage is between one man and one woman. Okay, kid be, feels ostracized. You know, where's the lawsuit there? Hey, you made my kid feel wrong because of this. You told your, your you know, you told the, the class, you know, told my kid, uh, our, our kid that, you know, his two mommies or her two, his two, her two daddies are wrong and sinful. Well, been there, done that. You Not know? with the uh, gay couple, but I've had kids in my confirmation class whose parents were cohabiting. Yes, and... but, but you're strictly a religion, a church. Not a school. This is a religious school. It's owned by the you church. Know. It's understood but, uh, that the church is that the, uh, a church school is going to teach the teachings of the church. All right. They knew that going into. It. I mean, if you sign your kids up for a Catholic, um, a, a Catholic school, you're going to assume that they're going to teach them Catholic teachings. That means that you, as a parent, if you don't like what they're teaching them. And if you sign them up there, maybe because it's just a good school or something like that, then that means you've got to talk to your kids. All right. I send my kids to public schools. They are sometimes taught things that we don't agree with, but we teach them that when you come across something you don't agree with, let's talk about it, you know, or something you're not sure about, or, or you know, and we talk to them about what are you learning? All right. I don't, I'm sorry, but I don't see this as being any different. You send them somewhere, you're going to um, expect certain things. And then what about uh, when the kids, you know, reach that <clears throat> delightful age when, you know, they're they're challenging everything and they start to decide, you know, I, I had a kid one time um, when I first started ministry, uh, first started this gig um, because we did confirmation in our school and she was from a United Pentecostal background. And she used to argue all the time on um, uh, baptism and on the Trinity and all this other stuff, and I mean, I'm just like, you know, I've got, yeah, you know, I've got things I got to do here, kid. I can't be sitting there arguing, you know, point after point with you every single day. Yeah, well, I mean, that sounds like a lot of my confirmation classes, though, you know, and um, and so then there comes a point where you you have to take the student aside and say, you know, I would be happy to talk to you about these things. But I, you know, also have a responsibility to, uh, to meet certain things. So here's the deal. All right. You're going to have to respect me as a teacher. And if you disagree with something, then if you'd like to discuss it with me after school or, or something like that, that's fine. I'd be happy to talk to you about it. If you'd like to, you know, to get together with your, uh, you can get together with your parents. We can talk about it that way. However you want to do it is fine. You know, so there's a matter of, of respecting your teacher there, but. You obviously have never taught school. People like you are the reason I was afraid to go to school as a child. I, you've never sat in a classroom with 25 kids for six hours, have you? Those kids is driving me crazy! Okay, we're talking about one particular teaching. It's not like this is going to come up in... Well, okay, it probably would come up in math class um, because kids like to get off topic. You know, my kids in my confirmation class get off topic all the time. All right. Sometimes no, no, no. it's a topic. You that... obviously have not dealt with 25 kids and one kid's starting to argue the point and, uh, the other kids start in too. And, uh, at the end of teaching for six hours a day, you really don't want to sit there and, and go talk to this kid for two more, another couple hours and didn't talk to the parents too. Oh, that way. Um, okay. you, you no, think, I what you're saying. you know, we, 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 we preached, I, I did this. I taught religion in, um, grades three, four, five, six, seven, and eight for two years. Believe me, you think ministry is stressful? You try standing on your feet for six hours dealing uh, and interacting with a bunch of different kids. Well, okay, uh, so, then, that's, so then that's, instead, you just, you say, you know what? This is a Lutheran church. This is a Lutheran school, whatever. Um, you know, this is how we understand the Bible. If, if you understand it differently, you know, fine. But this is how we understand it, and that's how we teach it here. Yeah. Um, 
And I, now, I'm know, just saying, you know, I, 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 I see, I see where you're coming from, your argument, but I also sit there and look and going, you know, I can just see, I can see Rome just simply saying, don't want to deal with it. Yeah, we've got enough to deal with it already in the classroom. We don't want to deal with this too. Um, and I like the, the fact that this, uh, there's this, uh, Boulder Pride, which we're hearing from Catholics. They want us to be aware that not everyone at Catholic Church agrees with this decision. It's a wake-up call that will cause a public outcry and not go unchallenged, uh, oh, says Executive Director of Boulder Pride, Alicia Lewis. Oh, no, uh, Acilia. A-I-C-I-L-A. Uh, well, uh, 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 Ms. Lewis, the only thing I can tell you is, um, last I checked, the Roman Catholic Church is not a, a high, not a democracy. It's a hierarchy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Especially on, uh, on, on sexual matters. Um, right. the Roman Catholic Church has been challenged on pretty much every position it's taken by the majority of American Roman Catholics. And they haven't been. So, you know, I mean, no, that's not gonna, that's not gonna change. So. No, that's, that's, that's not. I mean, <laughs> I mean, a lot of people, uh, uh, there was a guy up here, um, there was a, a, an article in the Boston Globe about Catholic schools and, you know, how, you know, how well they do. And this one guy wrote in said, I'm an atheist, but I'd send my kids to Catholic school in, in a heartbeat. Uh, he said, they just train well. You know, they have a good, solid education. Um, and I would tell them, you know, cooperate with the stuff on religion. Don't listen to it because, you know, I don't believe it. Um, End of story. Uh, but this I could see, you know, uh, uh, see, no, uh, when you have an option. action like this, what? That's another option is to say, look, all right, we understand this is a situation in your home, all right? You're sending your kids to a Catholic church. You know what the Catholic church teaches. It's been all over the news for t since time immemorial, all right? So, you know, here's our expectation of you as parents that you're going to talk to your kids and say, um, you know, that, that this is what the school teaches and we expect you to show respect to the, to the teachers. And, and if it becomes a problem, then we'll discuss whether your child is going to still be able to be enrolled in the school. If, if your child is being a major disruption, you know, they could take it that way too, instead of just flat out saying, Nope, not going to happen. And if, uh, if the kid was a disruption and stuff, then you gotta prove that point and it's, you're dealing with the whole mess over again. Uh, having been acting as a principal, having taught in a Lutheran school for a couple of years, having been on the board of directors of a Lutheran high school, um, I can see their thing saying, this is just the easier way to deal with it. Yeah, um, but the easiest way is usually not the best way. Says the guy who's never taught. I know. I know. I know. Says the guy I, who's never had to make those decisions. Talking from ignorance, all right. But I've also oh, had to deal with cohabiting couples and stuff in the church, and you know, yeah. and um, so it, it's you know, it, it's not like I'm. Yes, I'm. I'm alien to the and inexperienced with the whole school um, setting, but um, I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm. I don't know. But and I, you don't I, want some, some, yeah, I don't know. I can just, I can just see where they're coming from and, you know. So, uh, you disagree, but, uh, 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 you know. Well, let's put it this way. When the Lord returns and will all out knowledge will be revealed. And you'll go, gosh, Jim was right all along. I should have listened. <laughs> well, this would be a good point to say, all right. We've got lots of, you know, viewers and listeners, or a couple of them out there anyway. All right. And uh, we usually do this at the end. But, all right, Jim and I are, are split on this one. We we tend to agree on just about everything, but this one we're kind of split on. So I'd like to hear from you, our listeners and viewers, podcast at crossfeednews.com. What do you think? All right. Do we got some teachers out there? Um, you know, what would you do in this situation? Have you ever been in this situation? Uh, you know, anything like that? We'd like to hear from you. So tell us what you think. Uh, or do any Lutheran school teachers or Catholic school teachers or anybody's got that, that type of experience of saying, okay, what well, would I do this in my school? Yeah. So, you know, you know what Glenn Beck would do? 
<laughs> Run away! <laughs> uh, right. Yeah, our buddy Glenn. Now, I don't know. I have never watched Glenn Beck. Okay, I mean he's one of these people who you hear. It's kind of like Rush Limbaugh. I hear about him. I've never watched him. I have no clue what he would say. Um, you know, I. I, I think I, I listened to Rush Limbaugh like three times in my life, and all every three times I said I can't put up with this anymore. And you know, it just I've I I've caught Glenn Beck a couple show. times because my dad's a fan, and um, mm. and he's like, oh, you got to check this guy out, and and so I uh, once or twice, mostly when I'm over at his house. Um, but uh, Glenn Beck used to be sort of a toned down version of Rush Limbaugh, but he seems to be striving for the extreme lately. Um, so, and so this is, was, so he was toned down when he was on CNN, loosened up a little bit since he moved to Fox. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just right between the line there. Anyway. So, um, I'm back by the way, happens to be Mormon. Um, I, but, I, I yeah. didn't know that until I read this article. Yeah, I didn't know that either. I thought that was interesting. But anyway, uh, he said um, Christians should leave the church if it starts talking about social justice. Now, I would like to have seen his actual quote there, but you okay. know, that's exactly what he said. I watched the clip um, okay. because I thought, oh, this is just being taken out of context. All right. And basically what he's saying is social justice is a, is a buzzword that's used. Um, for for communists and Nazis and, and things like that that um and and what he's saying is that these groups that are sort of trying to infiltrate their way into society will use this term to explain what it is that they're doing to explain their goals and so he's saying it's it's sort of an insidious buzzword that is used like it's, it's kind of a brainwashing thing that people go, oh, well, yeah, who's, who would be against social justice? And then that's sort of used to, oh, well, if you agree with that, then, you know, how about this? And, and sort of works it in that way. Which, of course, he's equating uh, with, uh, you know, Barack Obama and, you know, socialist health care and all that kind of thing. This is madness. Well, I, I would say the, the, the you know, well, he, he, we one needs to ask that beautiful Luther Lutheran question. Was ist das? What does this mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, you talk this word, social justice. What what are you you know advocating? Um, you know because I think there is a need to care about the poor, um, and there is a need to uh, 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 you know, um, but. You know, there's 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 nothing. I can't find anything, at least in scripture, that says you know you need to care about the poor. Okay, scripture tells us care about the poor, and I think it's windows. pretty obvious. God cares. God is on the side of the poor, uh, as opposed to the the the, the word of faith people, preachers out there. However, what I can't find in scripture is the rules that say. You have to take care of the poor this way, right. and you know. So he talks about you know it's a, uh, uh, um, you know, you get into redistributive income, um, you know, you, you uh, and things like that. Well, then you know you do have a problem. Uh, you know, he he says, uh, you know, one of the thing he apparently, you know, part of that it's rights of workers. Well, okay, uh, yeah, but. <laughs> You know, there is this thing, you know, it's in, you know, Jeremiah where God gets after King Jehoiachin for exploiting the workers, for, for demanding work done for free and, 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 and not paying people a fair wage. Okay. Yeah. That I would say that is part of us. You know, that is something given certain committees that may be something you have to address. Doesn't mean that you're then advocating that everybody be part of a union. Right. Not yeah. that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> in case my father-in-law is listening you know uh, uh. Yeah, mine too <laughs> um, you know I, I actually somebody pointed this article out to me and, and said hey and, and the guy that pointed it out to me is an atheist and, and he said you've got to respond to this man you know you've got 
I'm sure you've got members of your congregation that, you know, that pay attention to this and, and stuff. And I don't know. So I, I, I looked up the actual clip of the, where he talked about it on his radio show, where he talked about it on his TV show and, and, you know, and, and really listened to it in its context and things like that to see what he actually said. And so, and I wrote up a blog post. If anybody wants to read it, it's at, uh, shepherdtheridge.org. And, um, and so, and, and basically what I said is, you know, really the, the Bible sort of talks about it, but, um, first of all, we need to understand the distinction of the two kingdoms, which, um, you, you know, the Bible does talk about this, this separation. And, uh, when you have churches advocating a particular form of government or that the government do certain things, um, you're walking on really sh- shaky grounds there because, uh, ultimately, um, uh, I said what the church is, the church's job is not justice. The church's job is mercy. And so I would contend that, um, social justice is in the government's realm. Social mercy is in the church's realm. And that is to, you know, to reach out to people. Justice, um, does, I mean, fall under, you know, for Christians, uh, it's an issue, uh, but it falls under the, um, realm of government. And so pastors should not be preaching about it, but Christians, individual Christians, not churches, um, should be, uh, seeking, uh, social justice. However, in, in whatever form, um, you know, they believe to be right. And the church isn't going to, you know, take a stand one way or the other. And, uh, except for, you know, sort of the sort of concept of looking out for the orphans and the widows, you know, those who are disadvantaged, disenfranchised, whatever, you know, to, to help them out, uh, however we can. Uh, well, 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 if you know people, wait a minute, wait a minute. So, so, um, <clears throat> so let's say there's a, uh, uh, small town, um, and has a, a major employer. Mm-hmm. And comes to some evidence that the, the town that the the, the 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 company is exploiting the workers um yeah you know, they have ruthlessly cut their salaries you know and but yet the the owners are are awarding themselves very hefty bonuses um there is no health care um yeah given to the workers um you're saying the pastors there should not complain about that uh, that is because you know that they should just kind of you know sit back and go well that's really in the sil- the secular realm we can't say anything about this, oh, no, this okay. type of thing <clears throat> here in, in these sort of situations you're dealing with with individuals i think that the pastors can say this is what these people are doing is sin all right they need to repent of that sin and um and we need to to seek to help uh those who are being exploited however we can um but for a pastor to say this is what should happen and sort of laying it out i don't think he could do that because you know I'm not an economist i'm not a a judge i'm not a um you know any of those things this you know there there's a spiritual dimension to this certainly and that's the, the area that the pastor needs to address. I'm, I would be very reluctant to really get into the, um, the, the sort of economic side of it or, 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 or talk about, you know, what should be done or how it should be done or, or whatever, um, except in very general terms, just because I'm not sure, you know, I, I don't always have the big picture either. You know, there's certainly things where I look at it and go, that doesn't seem right. But there have been too many times where I've taken a stand on something like that, something similar, or, or, you know, that I knew something was wrong. And then, but then the more I, I looked into it, I realized that it wasn't as black and white as I thought it was. I mean, you know, the picture you're painting is pretty black and white. And a lot of times it is, but it's not always. And, and so, you know, I don't know. I I think now, a lot of times it gets very tricky. I mean, a good example is the, the the Catholic bishops dealing with the area of healthcare. Now, for uh, um, 
talk about a group there that's you know advocating for a particular thing. They've advocated really for um, a single payer system for years. But they, they what it's, I think I don't know what the one issue that they're dealing with now though, of course, is that you can't get a single payer system unless apparently you get abortion thrown in, thanks to Catholic Nancy Pelosi. Maybe they need to <laughs> deal with their member there. Um, um, but, uh, 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 you know, um, you know, well, maybe they just need to say, hey, this, this is your position. This is the position of the church. You can't be here. You know, go find, you know, go find some other church body. I hear the ELCA is, you know, losing members, so maybe they could take a few more. And I don't, the UCC could probably use a few more. Uh, yeah, they do. Too. Unitarians let you believe anything you want. Um, Go knock yourself out. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, 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 but again, it's, you know, to me, I've always kind of struggled with the fact that they say this is, this, this is the preferred plan. Yeah. Well, who are you to say this is the preferred plan? Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, which, you know, which, just, you, Rada, which, which are you are MDs? Which are you? <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, <laughs> there was that event where, where the guy says, Hey, Jesus, you know, um, my help me and my brother settle the estate. I mean, it was, it was a little more explicit than that. Tell him to give me half or, or tell him to give me my share or whatever, which this was, this was the justice issue. Um, you know, where there was, he said here, you know, there was, it was very clearly defined, um, in their system, how inheritances worked that the oldest gets, um, gets two shares and then, um, and, and everybody else gets one share and it just gets all divided up that way. Right. Um, and, and, and Jesus said, Hey, you know what? Not my job. I'm not a judge. Hey, okay. So what do you think? Is Beck right? If you hear your preacher start talking about social justice, you'd be heading for the doors. Yep. Send us a note. Oh, I'm asking you. Oh, you're asking me? Is Beck right? Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I think that he's painting with very broad strokes and that, you know, I, I think that if, if your pastor is talking about you should listen to what else he says instead of just listening for a buzzword. If he's, you know, if he's talking about, you know, socialism or universal health care or something like that, then, you know, then you definitely need to talk to him um, and say, I hey, say you're... Is, does he really preach the gospel? Is his uh, emphasis there on Jesus? And I'm not sure if you're advocating from the pulpit for universal health care if you can do that. On the other hand, you know, we 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 advocate for on 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 life issues in our preaching yeah. and and things. So, um, but we always try to tie that back to the gospel. So, uh, so okay, let's throw that out to our listeners, though, uh, both of them. Uh, okay, folks, uh, uh, and your feedback is, is, is Beck right? Uh, how should the church address the issue of the social justice? Because, you know, whether or not we always want to be, we are an institution in our societies. And that brings and, us into, into dealing with that. And you're dealing with the whole area of, of health care, can think of it. Uh, you know, churches, you know, uh, uh, run hospitals. Churches, provide health care for their uh, pastors. Um, we should, anything that's, any decision that's made there is going to wind up affecting us. Yep. And the other question is, can you find, L, can you find social justice on LDS.org? <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. Um, no, but, uh, Okay, well, uh, since we're talking about uh, uh, social issues and uh, the courts and, and government and all that kind of stuff, uh, let's pop over to San Francisco to our favorite court, the, the Ninth, ninth, ninth circuit, circuit of Appeals, appeals. Uh, and our good buddy, Michael Newdow, who we haven't heard from for a while, but um, showed up. You remember he was the guy a few years ago who sued um, the... Uh, 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 he sued because of um, he's, he's an atheist in Sacramento, and he sued because his daughter had to say the Pledge of Allegiance with the words "Under God, One Nation Under God," and um, 
the Ninth Circuit said, yes, that is indeed a uh, religious thing, and therefore um, she doesn't have to say it, and we're going to throw it out, and you can't say it anymore. And that went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said, you don't have custody of your kid. <laughs> you have no standing here. They dodged Threw the whole thing it. Out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just really dodged it. So he decided now it's time to, I don't know, do something else. And so he finds some kindergartner, atheist couple with a kindergartner, who obviously have nothing better to do than let him go ahead and sue. So he does it again. And the federal court found in his favor. But the appeals court, interestingly enough, uh, and a 193-page ruling <laughs> said, This pledge is an endorsement of our form of government, not of religion or any sect. That's a long ruling. <laughs> Over, you know, <laughs> a half a sentence. Right. And um, it was two to three. Stephen Reinhardt. Um, who actually was one of the guys who threw it out the first time. Um, he ruled that, yeah, still, I still think it's a prayer. And he quoted, um, you know, statements that were made by the senators and congressmen at the time it was added in the 1950s. Um, but, um, he was overruled. I think it's at least worth noting that this is, both of these things were added in the 1950s. It's not like these, um, one nation under God or in God we trust dates back to, um, you know, to the founding of our country or anything. Right. Um, yeah, they said this is not a prayer. It is a recognition of our founders political philosophy that a power greater than government gives people their inalienable rights, which I think oftentimes, um, in the, in the, um, constant declaration of independence, mm -hmm. Uh, speaks in terms of our creator, providence, um, which I think, I see, I like the ruling, not just because they, they have held, I have held that, but the idea that government does not give rights to the people. Those rights are given by a, a higher power, and the people give rights to the government. So, um, I... Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that it was interesting because they said that the words... Uh, 1954 law that added these words at the height of the Cold War was meant to convey the idea of a limited government in stark contrast to the unlimited power exercised by communist forms of government. Uh, Congress, uh, ostensible and predominant purpose was to inspire patriotism. Right. <clears throat> now, it would be different. I mean, they, they said, uh, um, you know, Reinhardt and his thing said, um, you know, numerous lawmakers denounced atheist to communism, declared to believe in God to be part of the American way of life. Uh, President Dwight D. Eisenhower uh, signing statement, you know, the millions of children, school children proclaimed the dedication of our nation and its people to the Almighty. Um, his problem is, though, is that the word God is not defined. That's that's where that's that's where uh, uh, Doctor Dudow here has made his error. If it said one nation under God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, yep. Ah, then we'd okay. Now we have an error, an issue here. Um, that's being specific to Christianity. But if you're saying under God, well, AA says you know we, you know, God as we understand Him. Mm -hmm. Whoever he, she, or it may be. It's against my programming to impersonate a deity. Yeah, and and so that's the issue here is the um, the Constitution says that Congress shall not establish any. Uh, I'm so horrible at memorizing. Um, Jim, you got to establish any religion. Okay, I, I thought there was more to it than that. Um, so, in other words, it was written or prohibit the free exercise thereof. thereof yep. All right. So the point was to um, to avoid a state church, All right? And you know, over the years, that's been sort of expanded to say they're not to, you know, do anything that sort of favors one religion over another. Okay. Well, 
the closest thing you can argue here is that this favors theism over atheism, the belief in, in some sort of almighty power, um, or not even necessarily almighty because you could say, you know, this, this could also refer to, you know, like a, um, a Hindu God or, or something like that. That's a much smaller, not almighty, um, sort of God. And, um, or, you know, for, you talk to a lot of, uh, AA people that are not Christians or not practitioners of a, an established religion, their God may be the doorknob, you know, <laughs> or something like that. Um, and so, I, ah, uh, here it is. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibit, prohibiting the free exercise thereof or of abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. Right. So, there it is. Very simple, very, 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 very easy. Uh, somehow or another, you know, I haven't figured out how we get some of the laws we do when it's a, no law. I haven't figured out those words. But anyway, um, no, you're absolutely right. You know, this, 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 this is just saying, uh, 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 this is... I guess, you know, I'm surprised he didn't sue, sue because of the, you know, all-seeing eye on the back of the dollar, which is also, you know, a, it's a Masonic sign for God, but it's a sign of God for God. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> he probably doesn't know what it means. <laughs> I don't even want to try and say that, but, you know, it's, it's I, I think there's just really nothing, you know, uh, deep about that, and... um yeah, I, of course, I remember when they tried to, you know, originally, you know, the the Ninth Circuit made their original ruling. I, people suddenly found Red Skelton's old uh, thing on uh, the Pledge of Allegiance there, and you know, and he, of course, I think that was made in like 1960, and he pointed out that, you know, since he was a boy, the words "under God" had been added, and he was quite pleased by that. <laughs> I don't know. I honestly, I have mixed feelings about it. Not that I'm, you know, against having it there. I think it's it's worth having there and everything. But at the same time, I don't think that it really proves anything. I think people get really like, oh, you have to have that in there. Like, I, I'm not sure what it accomplishes. Well, I'm, I'm not sure what it accomplishes. I'm not sure what would moving it would, would accomplish. Uh, it seems to me, you know... I would wish, hope people, this guy would have something better to do with his time, you know. Uh, uh, <clears throat> but he says he's going to appeal it to the Supreme Court, but he's not optimistic. I think that the Supreme Court probably is going to go, we really have better things to do with our time. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I just, I, you know, you know, there's, there's plenty of things that, that go on in the government that I disagree with, that I feel like I'm being discriminated against or whatever. All right, but they're not listening to me. <laughs> All right, you know. Heck, I, I in Massachusetts we have to prove we have health care. You have to uh, uh, put on your um, uh, um, your your tax return, your uh, insurance company, the policy number. And I have, you know, said I don't want to put it on there. I think it's supposed to be innocent till proven guilty. They have. They should have to prove I don't have it. <laughs> now, the burden of evidence should be on them. The way this is, is I'm guilty till I prove myself innocent. Yeah. Uh, well, I know he's yeah, listening to that. You know, I, I look at it and I say, okay, my wife's a stay-at-home mom. All right, you can get a tax credit if somebody else takes care of your kids during the day, but if you take care of your own kids, then you don't get a tax credit. What's up with that? That doesn't make any sense. Right. So well, I know say she's taking care of some other stay at home kids, mom, and they're taking care of hers and that they're charging each other uh, twelve thousand dollars a year. And, you know, take it off evenly. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> and somebody would say, we don't see, any, you know, and, and they can write each other a thousand dollar check and, you know, pass it back and forth and rip it apart. You know, so, you know, it's. <laughs> or <laughs> yeah. like you have to deposit them at the same time. <laughs> right. You know, but, you know. It's, you know, just, just, you know, it's all a wash. So. Okay, I'll let you cover this next story. I have no... 
Or maybe Michael Newdow's mucus feet. I don't know. <laughs> all right, all right. So first speaking of all, speaking of God, speaking of God, <laughs> there it is. First of all, if you are eating right now, yeah. pause. <laughs> oh, oh, also though, it says topics: um, crime, human interest, law and justice. So this could be a social justice article. <laughs> Sorry about this. I know it's a bit silly. <laughs> okay. It's right, right there at the top. It's a law and justice. Yeah. Be, you know, <laughs> so, United States. United States social justice. Glenn Beck, where are you? Yeah. You need to cover this. <laughs> it also falls under the category offbeat. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn Beck, where are you? you <laughs> all right. So you've been warned. All right. This is gross. <laughs> all right. Charles L. Stewart practices the African faith known as El Africano, which is a blend of Yoruba and Catholic practices. I had to look this up. I couldn't find any information, uh, not even in Wikipedia, which seems to have everything. Um, all I could find with, under El Africano is that there's a um, a merengue song called that that's pretty popular, I guess. Um, but uh, Yoruba uh, religion is an African religion that... Um, it uh, it sounds a lot like Hinduism. Um, it's it is one of the sort of root religions of Voodoo, um, and uh, well, this Mister Stewart uh, down in Florida is uh, having his uh, practices scrutinized a bit because he smuggled in snails into the country, the sort of snail, African snails that can grow to 10 inches long, um, that reproduce on their own, eat more than 500 plant species, and are known to eat plaster and stucco. And he, as part of a healing treatment, um, gave them to his followers to drink large quantities of their mucus. Yep. Cheers. <laughs> Hey, yeah, have a few drinks and, you know, drive home. This is tea, not mucus. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this guy, he, uh, uh obviously, since these, these snails are illegal, one of the reasons is that they're a real problem in the ecosystem. Uh, you know, because they just kind of ruin everything. Uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, I, I'm not, he says, um, you know, uh, 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 he, he, um, this is a, he was a, a El Africano person there in Africa, and now he's brought this in. Um, and this is going to shock everyone. I mean, you're going to be shocked to discover this, but people begin to complain of violent illnesses, lumps in their stomach, and loss of weight. <laughs> Now, I'm sure that no wouldn't. I'm sure nobody ever would have thought those things would have happened. I'm sure that just you know everybody's going, "Wow, man, God smacked me that time." I'll tell you, <laughs> never saw that coming. All right, now we've gotten you know criticized before for being insensitive to people's religious beliefs. <laughs> Right, because you know there's some pretty bizarre stuff out there, and admittedly, there's some pretty bizarre things that Christians believe too, including of what we believe about ingesting certain things like Jesus' body and blood. Okay, but snail mucus. <laughs> Did, there's there's a great. Comment. I mean, if it was French, I could understand that they were sautéing them or something, and you know, but uh, but. <clears throat> <laughs> There's a great comment on the article that says something like, do you, do you have the article up there? Yes, I do. Do you got the comment about the, um, it was, it was one of the top comments on it. But if your leader. <laughs> oh, if your minister tells you to eat snail mucus, what do you think? Maybe I should become Methodist. <laughs> Boy, no control. So, you know, yeah, that's the one you're thinking. Yeah, yeah. Th there comes a point where you really start to go, really. I mean, you know, there's just certain things that are just not a good idea. They're just not healthy. You know, because I mean, this is supposed to be part of a healing treatment. 
it's kind of toxic. That that should clue you in. I mean, I I know we're gonna like the the Yoruba and and El Africano people are gonna send us nasty letters just like the the Jedi did, you know. Um, but boy, you know, I. <sighs> I'm having trouble with if if you want to do that, fine. But then we better not have universal health care because I don't want to have to pay for you to be treated out of my tax money because <laughs> you kind of asked for it. Yeah, well, I see. Uh, I have a an issue there with myself. That's that's one thing I, I struggle with a, a lot of time on. Uh, uh, things like, for example, the health care. What do you do with people like that who make uh, stupid decisions? You know, um, but I, I don't know. You know, it, it's like, you know, if they tell you to eat the pudding or drink the Kool-Aid or, you know, whatever. Like, there comes a point where you got to kind of think for yourself. Okay. <laughs> and, oh. Wow. I, so uh, I guess, you know, ultimately I look at these things and go, man, I'm glad I'm a Christian. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. That's sure. So if, you know, uh, okay. if, if, if any of you, if there's any Yorubas or, or El Africanos or, or, or whatever that out there, you know, nothing against you personally, you understand. But, you know, snail slime's gross. And, but we would like to hear from you too. All right, and I, and I, I mean, I, I have to apologize <laughs> for you know for being sort of insensitive on this one, but I'm just having a really hard time with this. You compare this with it, you know, one of our first stories that we ever did was about a woman that married a cobra. All right, that made more sense than this. <laughs> Uh, I'm not even going to go there. Anyway, folks, uh, maybe any comments on this one, any, any of the other stories, always at podcast at crossfeednews.com. Uh, but I warn you, Dale has a nasty habit of using that address to write to everybody, and I <laughs> get copies of this stuff all the time. It's kind of fun. Oh, yeah. I... <laughs> Excellent sent out a few I have messages. got more dirt on him now than you would ever imagine. <laughs> None of it was personal, you know. <laughs> kind of stuff. He, he says was... that now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, so we've got... Um... <clears throat> but, yeah, uh, with that, folks, uh, God give you all a really, really good week in his grace. Um, it's going to be another busy one, and uh, but it looks like oh, spring is oh. coming. Oh, yes. You know what? I do have feedback. I I almost you forgot. Do. I have it sitting here. Um, Jason at my church who watches this gave me this today. Um, it is a uh, Bizarro comic, all right. And um, and I don't know if you can read it there, but yeah. it's 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 a couple of kids uh, sitting there with a Ouija board, and a ghost appears and says, "I don't use Ouija boards anymore. I've switched to Scrabble." So he, he saw this and. And since he watches the show and remembers that we did the Ouija board story a couple weeks ago, <laughs> it just thought it was funny. So pass that on. So thanks, Jason. Thank you for there, buddy. Um, then uh, quasi everybody have a, have a joyous St. Patrick's Day this week. Um, and remember that he was much more than just simply I Actually, he was not Irish. He was probably Scotch, maybe French. Uh, but uh, he was indeed a great saint of God who uh, 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 brought about intertribal peace, uh, ordained over a thousand pastors, um, built churches, orphanages, and did hospitals and other great works of mercy. The Druids had him arrested 25 different times, and every time he got back out and went back to preaching again. Yep. And and as my daughter pointed out, she was annoyed by all the four leaf clovers because she says it's supposed to be three leaves because it represents the Trinity. <laughs> that's <laughs> that, true. That's what the clover is all about, connected with St. Patrick's Day, because he taught that you know 
you're trying to explain the Trinity to pagans, you know, he said, just as there's three leaves, but it's all one shamrock. Um, so God is three distinct persons and yet all one God, which, you know, eh, the analogy still falls short, but so does every analogy when it comes to the Trinity. So anyway, so have a good time. Eat corned beef and pav- cabbage, drink green beer. I'm still off the stuff till after Lent. So, uh, uh, just enjoy yourself though. Good night, everybody. God bless you.